don't have to work with reporting services very long to recognize that you often need a little more advanced reporting, such as drop-down lists, uh, ability to do parameters. And that's what this series is about, is using parameters with reporting services. Now, as a sort of an introduction to how to work with parameters in reporting services. I'm just going to take something very easy. Uh, let me load up the Visual Studio. We'll create ourselves a new project. And it, we'll just create a report server project. I don't care what it's called. We're just, we're not going to deploy it or anything. We're just going to stay here in the um, development environment. And I'll create us a nice little data source. Call it um, uh, DS. Uh, What's my server? LIF server. And we'll just connect to LIF server and AdventureWorks. I don't need to check the connection because if it populates the rest of the database, I know it was successful. So I say OK. And I'm going to create a report. And I'll use the report wizard. We can do this uh, in the report wizard. And what I want to do, we'll choose our data source that we just created, is I just want a very real basic query. We'll get the, um, uh, we'll just grab it all from the sales order header table. And if you don't know how the tables are laid out in the AdventureWorks database, when a salesperson makes a sale, a row gets added to the sales order header. And in that table is the salesperson ID, the customer, the account number, and the total due. Now there's a lot of other information, but it's kind of like the parent table. It's like the master in a master detail relationship. There's sales order header and sales order detail. So this is the header row, the, the, de the master row. Okay. But here's what I'm going to do. Instead of grabbing all of them, I'm going to just get the ones where salesperson ID equals salesperson ID. Now if you are familiar with transact SQL, you know that that command would not parse because we would have declared a variable here that has not been or we would be using a variable that has not been declared but in reporting services something else happens so let's just remember that this is called salesperson ID and we're gonna say next and it doesn't stop us now if we did have a syntax error it would not let us go forward so the fact that we say next and you know pick out whatever columns that I want um, Account number, salesperson ID, uh, you know, pick out whatever columns. It, it really doesn't matter. Say next, next, give it a name, you know, sales by salesperson. And we say finish. And we run our report. So I'm just going to click on the preview button over here. And I don't really get anything except for I get this little text box. And I could type in 288. And I could tell it to view the report. And you can see that it has auto-parameterized that query for us. It gave us a text box. We could type in 284. And uh, that now changes to this person's salesperson. Let's find one that doesn't have so quite so many orders there, maybe. Uh, 43670, uh, 290. I don't know these uh, by hand is 5108. All right, you can see it's actually dynamically querying based off of the salesperson ID that we put in. If we put in a negative one, for example, we have no sales by that salesperson, then it shows that there are no sales. So there's a little bit of auto parameterization. And how you can view what happened is you're in the design mode of your report. So uh, when I'm over here in the Solution Explorer, I need to double click on my report and it populates this report menu. Now watch, close it, okay. report menu is gone. So you need to be in the design mode of your report and then you drop it down and you see the report parameters. And sure enough, we see that it has created a new parameter for the salesperson ID. Now there's no available values down here, so it's not queried, and there are no values typed in directly. And that's why we had that little text box pop up to say, you know, which salesperson ID would you like us to query upon? Now, what we could do, instead of dealing with the defaults that it gave us here, is we could start customizing it. Now I went directly into showing you how to uh, just create a basic parameterized report because I wanted to show you how easy this really is. Uh, it's really, really simple. 
I mean, it really does work as easily as I just showed it to you. So do not be intimidated about dealing with parameterized reports. Even multi-valued parameters are not going to be tough in reporting services. So uh, let's kind of take a little bit of a, a deeper look here into working with the parameters here. Okay. All right, so I'm in the design view. Now, looking at our salesperson ID, you'll probably recognize that this is a numeric value. So when I look at the report parameters, notice that I flipped over to the data sets view. When I go up here to the report parameters, it thinks that it's a string. So we need to change this up a little bit. Now, there's only a few data types that you're supported working with the report parameters, true, false, date, time, integers, float, and string. Right? Well, this is an integer value, so we can safely choose that it's an integer. And so I say, okay, and it won't affect when I preview this at all. I mean, you know, I can't type in Scott up here and have it actually run that. We get an error. Now it's not valid for that type. Once we put in, say, 288, which was one that we had previously chosen, then it actually works. But there's a little bit more customization that you want to do. What if you don't want to have somebody type in this information? What if you want it to happen from, oh, for example, a, a drop-down menu? It's so, so easy. Okay, so it's so simple that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk through showing you how to do it, not explaining it. I'm going to go through it actually rather quickly, but when, the, when we come back in the next video, I'll stop, slow down, walk you through all the different options here. But I just want to show you how easy it is to create a drop-down list. Okay? So here we go. I'm going to go make myself a new data set, call my this, my drop-down list, and I'm going to say... Uh, give me the salesperson ID, last name plus comma plus first name as full name from sales.vsalesperson. Order it by the last name, comma first name. And I say OK. And what I'll do now is we'll come back over here. And we'll go to our report parameters. And I tell it that the available values come from a query. And I choose my data set, value, preview. And there you go. And you can see all of the people. I mean, how easy was that? I choose JPAC, and it shows all of that information. We choose uh, Linda Mitchell, and you can see all of Linda's sales. Now, I know I went through quickly, but literally that was 60 seconds. That included the typing in of my query. So you're really, it's so easy to do this. I'm going to come back in the next video, walk you through the details of how to do exactly what I did. We'll slow down. We'll take a look at what each option means there. But I just wanted to give you some confidence about how easy this is, and it's, there's really not that much to it.